from my kitchen to yours, from my Jamaican kitchen to your family table, to your plate, and most of all to your stomach. From my kitchen to yours, from my Jamaican kitchen to your family table, to your plate, and most of all to your stomach. Hey everybody, how y'all doing? Are you A-OK? -okay? In your neck of the woods, what up, what up? Manners and respect, man. I your girl, Debbie from Dongayal. Welcome you all to the Jamaican kitchen. Welcome once more. It is the Jamaican cooking journey. If you're new right on over here, special welcome. Those of you who were there with me from the beginning of this journey and you're still here, manners and respect. Whenever you're watching this video, if it's an anniversary or a birthday, happy anniversary, happy birthday. And to all of the successful CXC um, young people right throughout the Caribbean, I just want to say congratulations to you and your parents that have, and your teachers also, that have helped you to achieve this milestone. On today's episode of the Jamaican Cooking Journey, we're going to be taking another look at Jamaican rice and peas. Rice and peas, and when you see on the Jamaican Cooking Journey channel, you see R&P, that is a shortened form for rice and peas, right here. So what uh, we'll be looking at, how to get a successful tasting, cooking, and all of that, rice and peas. So I've got here some peas that I've pre-soaked, washed, and pre-soaked. Now, personally, I think, person, I personally am having problems with getting those original peas that you get this nice red color from. Oh, somebody stated, more peas, um, you can't get enough color, more peas. No, no. If the peas haven't got enough color, you could have used one oh, trailer load of it. You just ain't going to get the color because the, the, the type of peas that you're looking for it's not there. However, whichever you want to get, rice and red beans, rice and peas, whatever, if you want to use the canned ones, go ahead, I've never used the canned ones. So today I'll be doing it, not the authentic way, the authentic way is on the wood fire or the coal stove. I'll be just doing it in or indoors on my stove. So I've got here some peas I've washed and I've put it to pre-soak. Always trying to pre-soak it is always better. So now, now that I've pre-soaked this peas, I think this is about a little, this is about 10 ounces of peas washed and pre-soaked. It was 10 ounces before and I have washed it and pre-soaked um, pre it. Now, the very first thing you want to try not, not to do with your red peas, the water that you soak your peas in, don't throw it out. That is why you are to wash it thoroughly and and then you pre-soak it. Do not throw away the water that the peas is soaked in. That's the water that you're going to use with the strength and the flavor to cook your peas. I'm going to be cooking it. So I'm going to be getting my flame up and I'm going to be doing it on medium. Now, cooking it, we are going to need a few um, pegs of garlic to start it with. So I'm using three. And you do your garlic or your feel for it. This is a natural thing in a Caribbean kitchen, especially Jamaican kitchen. You just smash your garlic and take the skins off and all of that. So this is what I'm doing right here. Smash your garlic and you can just pinch off your little head if you really so care. I don't really, I'm mean, not really kill myself for going into to things like those, you know. Because they will be cooked out and all of that. So you just get it all peeled. Remember now. I can do what I want to do because I've got a little running water. As soon as you peel it, try to give it a little grease, okay? It's always better that way, safer that day. Three pegs of garlic in and I'll add that right there. Now, I want you to think about something. I want to show you something. You're going to put a little salt, not a lot. You're going to put a little salt. Why, Debbie? You're going to put a little salt because the red peas as a flavor when you don't try to cook it with a little salt when you are ready when it's cooked to put the salt it is always giving a problem i don't know if you have ever experienced it the, 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 the liquid part has the taste 
but the piece of itself doesn't have any flavor. The liquid part has the flavor. So you want to put a little salt, not the full amount that you're going to use. You want to put probably about a half of a teaspoon of salt. You want to give it a sticker, and that's okay. Start your peas on cold water. You soak it in cold water, so you start cooking it with cold water. So you put that small amount of salt, okay? As the peas starts to cook, the grains of the peas will start absorbing that small amount of salt. Therefore, when you are ready to do the final touches of adding the salt in the coconut milk and all of that, you will, it will be easy to get the, 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 the liquid and the peas and everything to come, you know, to, to well blend it, to have a well blended balanced flavor. So this is what you start your peas with. Some garlic, do as much as you please, cold water, and a little pinch of salt. Start it on the medium, we're going to slow cook it. Always all of my rice and peas, they're always, I showed you how you do it in the pressure. I want to show you this way, but still I use my pressure cooker way because this takes some time, but I want to share this with you. Next clip. Let's get on to the other ingredients that we want to use in our peas, in our rice and peas. Medium, let it cook on the medium. Now it has been, and people might want to say, why must soak it, Debbie? It, when you pre-soak it, it takes, it takes a shorter time to cook. Coconut milk. Canned, frozen, fresh, it doesn't matter. Coconut milk, the coconut milk, the coconut milk must, these are frozen coconuts. I took them from the shell and I freeze them. Okay, that is how I do it. Sometimes I cut them up when I have the time and freeze them. Sometimes I just wash them and put them in here. Coconut milk. Canned, fresh, frozen. The coconut milk must be rich. It can't be workless coconut milk. To have the, if, the, if the coconut milk is workless, the rice and peas cannot have that nice Jamaican flavor. So, I've got a video there for you and how you pre prepare your coconut milk in the blender. I've seen people, but a few people been asking for, asking for it. I'm going to leave the link in the description for you to go see how you get your coconut milk from the dry coconut. Dry coconut too. And remember, you must make your milk rich. Make a reasonable amount. When this pea starts to cook in that amount of water, you see, it starts boiling right there. The amount of water that you have in here, as soon as it cooks and is almost at its lowest point, that is when you will require enough coconut milk to finish cooking this piece thoroughly and to have enough liquid to cook your rice when you do add it. Okay? So you know, one for put a bag of water in there, and then when the piece cook, you have some more coconut, little like weaky weaky coconut milk. You get what I'm saying? As the video proceeds, watch and what I'm saying, watch and what I'm doing. And those that like to click off in between because they think that the videos are too long, then when you click off the part that you want to get the info on the most, then you come right back to Instagram. You come right back to email me. And you come right back in the comment section asking. Make sure you're watching the video in its entirety. Okay? Now, you're going to need some pimento berries, pimento seed, allspice. If you don't have those, old cloves are good. You're going to need some fresh scallions. You're going to need some dry thyme. Of course, this should be a green pepper. You can put a green and a ripe. Ripe is for eat. Green is for flavor. So if you have something like this, you can still put it. Try, try, try. Do not let it get burst. Don't make it burst in there. You want this, some, oops, some ginger. Who, who puts ginger in rice and peas? Oh yes, the people that knows what the ginger is for, puts it in there. There are some people that they have very delicate bowel. And as soon these peas, the red on the peas, the coconut milk, it affects some people. When you put the ginger, you know, some people when they eat rice and peas, it builds up a lot of flatulence in their intestines. You all know about that, people who suffer with that. So when you use the ginger, it eliminates most, if not all, of that problem. Okay, you're not going to put a lot of ginger for the rice and peas, just gingery like history. 
for you to have enough ginger in rice and peas for fit your ginger. You don't must dig out one whole cultivation of ginger. Okay? So you just put a reasonable amount that you know will go right through coconut milk. I'm going to leave that piece to cook to, to the point where we are going to add the coconut milk. So when I return, I'll show you the point at which the piece is cooked, the amount of coconut milk, and how we add these little condiments, bringing you up to the point where you'll put your rice in, and how you, how you want, whether you want your rice and peas shelly, or you want your rice and peas on the moose side. I'll catch you in the next clip. We are back, family. In the prior clip, I showed you um, frozen coconut. And I know some people are going to come, hey, frozen coconut. And then some people are going to ask me, where in the um, supermarket you find it? I don't know if we get if we have got frozen coconut in our supermarkets or where you are. My frozen coconut was just coconut that I pulled from the shell. And yes, you can pull your coconut from the shell. You can cut it up prior to your um, rice and peas or whatever with a soup, whatever. Don't try that with rundown. Okay? Don't try that with the rundown. However, when you pull that frozen coconut from the refrigerator, you must use warm water to blend it. Okay? That is how you will get back the real good coconut milk. You see that? This is rich coconut milk. This is not coconut water. That is what you're going to need. Also, if you don't have frozen coconut, fresh coconut, use your canned milk. You can use your canned coconut milk to get what you want. They are packed, they are frozen like, like coconut, um, what's that camera girl? The frozen part of the coconut that looks something more like shining. I don't know what it is, but it's frozen. I'm not sure about those, but yes, you can use your frozen coconut. It does the same. Now, remember, I have gone through some people put coconut trash in their, co um, their rice and peas. I do not. So I am putting this right in there right now. I'm putting that amount. That is supposed to have proven it through my finest strainer. And I will it. So that now is to take, I'll show you something. This now is to take the peas where you want the peas to go. When, now if you look in there, you saw that we have like, I don't know, I did not show, but we had a small amount of that liquid. The peas has cooked up a certain point where it has absorbed most of the water or the liquid and the peas grains have become bigger. Now, you want to look here right near. So, you just let it cool down, do as I do. This is where the peas is at. It's not properly cooked. In a finished cook, it's like three quarter or a little more than three quarter. So what you want to do now, you know, you want to put in the coconut milk at this point where these pea, pea grains will be thoroughly infused with the coconut milk. Therefore, when you're eating your rice and peas, you taste coconut all over in a rice, in a pea grain. If you put your, 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 your pig tail in the tonitina, but beef with rice and peas, whatever, coconut milk will be all over. We're going to let this come to a boil and I'll let it know at this point. You don't want to cover this thing over. If you're covering it over, it must be at the lowest. If you're covering it at the medium, you got to do it like this. The coconut milk boils and comes over. You know that if you have worked with coconut milk before. So what you want to do, you want to let this come to a steady boil. Success, a successful rice and peas is not an easy walk over. It is not an express um, exercise. It goes with time. It goes slow. Okay, so you want to let this cook, come to a boil, and whilst it comes to a boil and starts boiling, that redness from the peas and the coconut milk, it will start coming around at the edge of the pot right there. So you want to come and you want to scrape it around every now and then. And that is what is going, you're blending, you're binding in the flavors of your coconut milk and your red peas. Your wine, your rice and peas taste good. Remember, we had it a little salt, so everything is good. Still have a little more to put in. So, as soon as it starts boiling for another 10 minutes where the coconut milk is infused, then you will add all these little condiments. I will not return to show you, but I will end up showing you when I'm putting in the rice and all of that. Get you. We are back, family. In the prior clip, I showed you... Um, 
frozen coconut. And I know some people are going to come, hey, frozen coconut. And then some people are going to ask me, where in the um, supermarket you find it? I don't know if we get if we have got frozen coconut in our supermarkets or where you are. My frozen coconut was just coconut that I pulled from the shell. And yes, you can pull your coconut from the shell. You can cut it up prior to your um, rice and peas or whatever with a soup, whatever. Don't try that with rundown. Okay, don't try that with the runner. However, when you pull that frozen coconut from the refrigerator, you must use warm water to blend it. Okay, that is how you will get back the real good coconut milk. You see that? This is rich coconut milk. This is not coconut water. That is what you're going to need. Also, if you don't have frozen coconut, fresh coconut, use your canned milk. You can use your canned coconut milk to get what you want. They are packed. They are frozen like, like coconut, um, what's that camera girl? The frozen part of the coconut that looks something more like shiny. I don't know what it is, but it's frozen. I'm not sure about those, but yes, you can use your frozen coconut. It does the same. Now, remember, I have gone through, some people put coconut trash in their, co um, their rice and peas. I do not. So I am putting this right in there right now. I'm putting that amount. That is supposed to have proven it through my finest strainer. So, that now is to take you, I'll show you something. This now is to take the peas where you want the peas to go. When, now if you look in there, you saw that we have like, I don't know, I did not show, but we had a small amount of that liquid. The peas has cooked up a certain point where it has absorbed most of the water or the liquid and the peas grains have become bigger. Now, you want to look here, right near. So, you just let it cool down, do as I do. This is where the peas is at. It's not properly cooked. In a finish cook, it's like three quarter or a little more than three quarter. So what you want to do now, you know, you want to put in the coconut milk at this point where these bean, peas grains will be thoroughly infused with the coconut milk. Therefore, when you're eating your rice and peas, you taste coconut all over in a rice, in a peas grain. If you put your, 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 your pig tail in the tonitina, but beer for rice and peas, whatever, coconut milk will be all over. We're going to let this come to a boil and I'll let it know at this point. You don't want to cover this thing over. If you're covering it over, it must be at the lowest. If you're covering it at the medium, you got to do it like this. The coconut milk boils and comes over. You know that if you have worked with coconut milk before. So what you want to do, you want to let this come to a steady boil. Success, a successful rice and peas is not an easy walk over. It is not an express um, exercise. It goes with time. It goes slow. Okay? So you want to let this cook come to a boil and whilst it comes to a boil and starts boiling that redness from the peas and the coconut milk it will start coming around at the edge of the pot right there so you want to come and you want to scrape it around every now and then and that is what is going you're blending you're binding in the flavors of your coconut milk and your red peas your wine your rice and peas taste good remember we had it a little salt so everything is good still have a little more to put in so as soon as it start boiling for another 10 minutes where the coconut milk is infused then you will add all these little condiments i will not return to show you but i will end up showing you when i'm putting in the rice and all of that get you okay now family we are right here this is always the hardest part when you are just starting out to, you, are, you know, you're a young cooker, you're not so versed. See, I've added all my seasonings, my little um, herbs, and all of that. My peas is properly cooked, and my coconut milk is there, and all of that. Let me show you. My peas is cooked. You don't do as I do. You try to smash it with a spoon. My hands are clean. Your peas is cooked. Now, this is always the hardest part, and I do know. Now, it's not ever easy to say if you're cooking a size pot like that for your family of rice and peas. 
who I want the recipe, how many cups of water. No, that is never an easy thing to do. So I've got here some rice. Get your rice of choice. I have all, I have already washed my rice. And you don't want to wash your rice and have any water. So when you take up your drain off the water, wash your rice ahead of time and give your rice some time to drain properly. I'm adding my rice right here. And I'm going to show you why this is always the hardest part. And most of all, I'll show you a little something, something or two. Or you can just try to eliminate yourself. Out of all, not really eliminate, but try to work around the hardest part. Get your stove down to low. And you're going to do right now, you're going to do this. You're going to mix, give this a thorough mix. So that your peas and your rice and all of that is properly combined. I have added my extra salt. I have brought it up to the taste that I want and all of that. <clears throat> now, as I said before, this is always the hardest part. Miss Debbie, our Debbie, the proportion. Yeah, how much water? No, as I said, if you're cooking a small pot of rice, that is easy. But when you're cooking a family size pot of rice and peas, it's not easy to have two cups of milk in three cups in a normal, you know, easy like that. It don't come like that. Don't make anybody fool you. So, what you want to do right here, when you look at this, you can see that this is okay. This water, I always do like this. It is okay. The rice is there. You can, as you start to stir, the rice and the peas is there. So, you see, I'm giving it this thorough stir. You're seeing the rice and you're seeing the amount of peas mind you you might not you might not be the person that wants all that amount of peas in your rice and peas depending on how you like it some people like a lot of peas some people don't so you want to cover right here. if it is that you have too much water when you put it in there it's always hard for some people some people can just look and say the water too much you can remove some of it before and that is when you are at the point when you clip up on it okay let me cover this so what you can do you can remove some of the water ahead of time and you can leave that peas and coconut juice water. You can leave it to cool and you can freeze it to put in your rice and peas next time. If the water is too much, you take out some. It is always best to put the rice in. Then you try to take some out without the rice. Try to do that. It's not hard. Take out the extra from the pot and put it there. If... It is that it is too little. You must always leave a little of your coconut milk. Let it like scall a bit. Because you know this other raw coconut milk. And then you would add it. If you see, oh Lord, you put in too much rice and all of that. So you add this like, extra coconut milk. Where you can just, you know, kind of let it scall. And you just pour it. Don't do it at once. Right over the top. And sometimes too, the rice are receiving. Sometimes the rice grain themselves big. And when you think the water was enough, it wasn't enough and you're going to need some extra. Put that there. There's a video that shows you when your rice not cook, what you have to do. Use a plain plastic without any ink, any writing. If you don't want to use that and you want to use foil paper, do it and you put it over it. And then don't do too much of the water. No, you know, don't do too much. Try to use mostly steam depending on how, you know, how the rice is. So I'm trying my best to help you. We're going to leave that on the medium again to let it start simmering down when it is through i'll come back i'll show you the finished rice and peas and i'll be plating it with something very special for you okay now fam finished pot of rice and peas we have moved removed all of these and we have parked it up with our fam oh, no, no, I don't know already some little but i've come add extra time to the video for that your ram your pepper it must not burst um, you throw away, remember to get out all of your um, ginger, your ginger pieces. That is why you're not to grate the ginger, you're to smash it. You to try to get those out. You've got to eat around the pimento seeds. Nobody wants to taste a chunk of ginger in their mouth, so try to get out those. And oh, yes, some of you don't eat these. Yes, we eat them, scallions and stuff, but if you want to eat them, you eat them as they are right there. There's nothing left in them. All the flavors have been cooked out in the rice and peas. But even though they can be eaten, you don't serve those. You don't serve them. So you have to remove them. So we've got a rice and peas here. Got a surprise for you. We'll show you what we want to plate it up with. Or what you can plate it up with. So just finish off that Jamaican look. 
From my kitchen to yours, from my Jamaican kitchen to your family table, to your plate, and most of all to your stomach. It's Jamaican rice and peas, and we serve it with aki and saltfish, with is, which is our, um, the, our national dish. Some slices of avocado. When I say avocado, I find say pear Jamaica. Remember to make sure, just as you bring some decor to your own, you bring some, dec um, some presentation to your food. It doesn't matter. I could have your husband, I could have your sister, your friend, better yet your kids. Bring presentation to your food, to your table, inside your kitchen, just like how you fix up your house with your drapes and all of your pieces and stuff. Remember once more, please do enjoy. If you have liked this video, if you think it has been of any, um, any significance use to you, remember to make sure you give me a big fat thumbs up. Remember to make sure you're subscribed to the Jamaican Cooking Journey. When you do subscribe, hit the notification bell. Be like the princess in Florida, she says, and I press the option that says all. Princess, big up yourself from the Jamaican Cooking Journey. And uh, make sure you check out my description. All the information to get on to me will be in there. Check out my community page. We'll be posting more often to let you know what is happening. We have got some stuff for you. So we are going to be posting it on our community page. Once more, from my kitchen to yours, and to your, to your family table, to your palate, and most of all, to your stomach. It is Jamaican rice and peas, and served with ackee and sawfish. But the video was based on how to prepare your rice and peas. Thanks for the love. How could I forget that? Thanks for the support. Thank you so much. Remember, eat meat and greet. You have all voted. And the new date is on my instagram page we'll be going live in a, probably another 24 hours and we'll talk we'll be talking